If you're a student, a casual creator, or just someone who needs a reliable laptop that doesn't break the bank, then this M1 MacBook Air is the perfect Mac for you, even in 2025. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Ever since the Apple Silicon chips launch, I think Macs have been the best computers on the market by far. And I still think this 5 year old M1 MacBook Air is amazing and in this video I'll tell you why. The performance of this thin MacBook is truly amazing. When it comes to day to day stuff like browsing, note taking or even running multiple apps at once, it doesn't even break a sweat. I've even done some gaming on it. Civilization 6 runs smoothly, which is pretty impressive for a fanless laptop this thin. I can easily edit videos on it, no problem at all. However, I will say that more basic video editing, a few different tracks and 1080p videos. If you use many different tracks and 4K videos, it might start to struggle a bit. But for light video editing, it gets the job done beautifully. And here's the thing, yes, newer Macs with M2, M3 and M4 chips are of course faster. But for the average person who doesn't edit 4K videos or something like that, you probably won't even notice a difference. That's how powerful this machine still is. Now, the real killer feature of this laptop isn't just performance, it's the battery. When I first got this MacBook, I was absolutely blown away. I could easily take it to school, use it for 8 hours straight, and then come back home and still use it some more, all without plugging it in. I'd only charge it overnight before going to bed. Even now, after nearly 5 years, the battery is still holding up. My maximum battery capacity is, according to Apple, 83%. According to Coconut Battery, it's 77%, and honestly, it still feels fantastic. If I don't use it heavily, it can last for days. One of the main reasons the M1 MacBook Air has such excellent battery life is that Apple controls both the hardware and the software. Because they design their own chips and the operating system, they can fine tune everything to work together really efficiently. That leads to much better power management and, in the end, a battery that lasts way longer than most other laptops. The display is pretty good but nothing mind-blowing by today's standards. It's a 13.3 inch retina display with relatively thick bezels compared to the newer models that are really thin and no notch at the top. The newer Airs like the M2, M3 and M4 have slightly larger 13.6 inch screens thanks to the slimmer bezels and that notch design. One thing I sometimes find a little bit annoying is the brightness. The screen only goes up to 400 nits, which means that if I try to work or do something with the Mac outside, it can be really hard to see what's on the screen. The newer Air models can go up to 500 nits, so they're a little bit brighter and easier to use outdoors when the sun is shining on your screen. So the M1 screen is very good, especially for everyday use like school, work or watching videos. And the differences from the M1 Air and the newer Air models are tiny. It's only when comparing the screen to the Pro models you'll notice substantial differences. But again, for most people, the M1 MacBook Air screen is still more than enough and personally, I've never felt the screen wasn't good enough. Before we move on to the Mac's design and keyboard, please like the video and subscribe. It means a lot. All right, let's talk design. First of all, the keyboard. I absolutely love this keyboard. Apple had a rough period with those butterfly keyboards on their older models, but the M1 Air uses their magic keyboard and I think it's perfect. Typing on it feels super comfortable and Touch ID also works very well and unlocks and opens the Mac almost instantly. And then there's the form factor. The Air is thin, it's light and easy to carry around. At just about 1.3 kilograms, you can just throw it in your backpack and forget it's there. That's why I think this laptop is absolutely perfect for students. It's reliable, it's fast and it won't break your bag carrying it to class. I used mine every day when I was a student and it was perfect for that. And let's not forget the build quality. It's aluminium, it's solid and like every other Mac, the quality is very good. Unfortunately, you only get two USB-C ports, and both are on the same side. On the other side, there's just a headphone jack. That means if you want to plug something in on the right side, or if a cable isn't long enough, you don't have that option. 
And because the two USB-C ports are so close together, it's actually possible that some accessories won't fit side by side. Personally, I also really miss MagSafe charging. It was quick, convenient, and most importantly, it was safe. If someone tripped over your charging cable, it would just pop off instead of dragging your laptop to the floor. An HDMI port or an SD card reader would have been nice too, but those were never really a part of the Air lineup. The newer MacBook Airs have basically the same setup as this one with the addition of MagSafe charging. If you want more ports, you'll need to go Pro. For comparison, here's my dad's MacBook Pro. It has MagSafe charging port, three USB-C ports, two on the left and one on the right, plus a headphone jack. It also has an HDMI port and even an SD card slot. So you definitely get way more flexibility and way more ports on the Pro compared to the Air. So how does it compare to newer Macs? Well, since the M1 MacBook Air, Apple has released the M2, M3 and M4 MacBook Airs and sure, they've got slightly better chip, slightly brighter screens, support for more RAM and better FaceTime cameras. But in real world use and for most people, the differences are surprisingly small. The M1 is still so good that for most people, upgrading makes little sense. The FaceTime camera is pretty bad quality as it's only a 720p camera. The newer Air models have a 1080p camera, but it doesn't bother me as I almost never use it. The only time you'd really need the newer models is if you're doing heavy workloads like editing 4K video, running massive data sets, or if you absolutely need a brighter screen or better FaceTime camera. But for students, writers, casual video editors, or anyone who just wants a reliable everyday machine, the M1 MacBook Air is still one of the best. One more important thing, Apple has an amazing track record with software updates. Since this MacBook Air is still being sold refurbished by Apple and was the very first M chip Mac, you can expect it to get Mac OS updates for many years to come. Another nice thing is that it has no fan, which makes it completely silent. No fan noise, ever. And despite that, it almost never overheat, something that still blows my mind to this day. I don't normally game on my Mac, but I have played Civilization on it a few times, and that's when I noticed it could get a bit warm. But in day-to-day -day use, it almost never happens. Most of the time, the M1 Air stays completely cool and silent, thanks to this fanless design. So should you buy a MacBook Air M1 in 2025? In my opinion, absolutely. It's still an amazing laptop. It's fast, reliable, has fantastic battery life, and will easily last you several more years. The new models are great too, but honestly, I think it's a better deal to get the M1 MacBook Air. It's not as expensive, but you still get an amazing computer that's almost as good. And you can get the M1 MacBook Air in good condition for around $500 to $600, which I think is a great price for the powerful machine you get. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed this review, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And I'll see you in the next one.